It's time for City Beat, your source for all the latest news on the city of Thompson. Only on 1029 CHTF, your radio station. I'm Monica Gould, and this is City Beat. Joining me today is Mayor Dennis Fenske. Thanks for joining me. Good morning. If you have a question for the mayor, give us a call at 677-8181 or email us at chtm at arcticradio.ca to kick things off. What's been happening in the city? Well, continuing with our construction updates, uh, the crews are still working on Cree Road, prepping the uh, the road for uh, paving and asphalt. Uh, that should happen in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've opened a, a new uh, construction zone. You'll notice on Thompson Drive, uh, the new across from the uh, uh, the old Anglican Church. Uh, that's the site of the new. Uh, gas bar, uh, co-op gas bar, and so there's a turning lane that's been uh, open there. So it's one lane traffic both ways uh, for the next little while. So just be aware of that. Uh, watch for the equipment and, and the vehicles moving in and around that area. Okay. Now uh, there's been some misinformation on social media about ATVs and what council is doing to make it safer in the city. Uh, would you be able to once again clarify for us what the ste- what steps the city is taking to make ATV riding safer in the city? Well, one, we just want to ensure that, that those that are using ATVs and uh, off-road vehicles, that they obey the current bylaws uh, as far as access uh, and egress in and out of the community. There are designated trails and we encourage those to, to use those. Uh, what we want to curtail is the uh, uh, ATVs and motorbikes on the streets uh, where they're not supposed to be, in areas of town where they're not supposed to be. So we are, we will be enforcing uh, that uh, that aspect of the bylaw. Uh, we live in a northern community, so ATV use and snowmobile use and motorbike use is expected and and, and accepted, but within the safe uh, uh, parameters of, of the bylaw and the safe operations of uh, of the vehicles themselves. So we just want to make people aware of where they can and can't go, and uh, please uh, adhere to the to the bylaws. You can go on to uh, the thompson.ca and find the bylaw and the maps that uh, that uh, show everything for that uh, we will be working again from an education perspective with the groups in town hopefully uh, realigning the atv trails uh, for the summer uh, and uh, moving forward with any bylaw amendments that we may have to bring in Okay, great. Now, uh, as we know, months ago, Greyhound cut their day service uh, around Thompson. At the time, it was said that council would maybe be in talks with the appropriate people about the issue. I just wanted to see what status is that in. Have uh, we been in conversation with Greyhound or members of legislature? Uh, We have sent letters to both uh, MLA and the representatives um, from uh, Greyhound in regards to the uh, service cuts that have been announced. Uh, We really haven't had much of an answer from, from them from that perspective. We will continue to lobby for that uh, required service in our community. Okay. A uh, reminder to our listeners, if you have a question you'd like to ask the mayor, call us right now at 677-8181. A resident here in Thompson recently launched what uh, he's calling a Thompson Tourism app. I'm not sure if you've heard about it. Um, so have you heard about it? And what are your thoughts if you have? I've heard a little bit of it. Uh, and it, I mean, anything that helps the, the tourism uh, industry in our community and around our community and region uh, is a positive. So uh, I wish him all the well with uh, with uh, the app and, and uh, making people aware of what's in our community, what the availability of, of um uh, things to do and things to see in and around the region. So uh, best of luck on, on that. And, and I said, anything like that is always a, an addition to the, uh, the tourism uh, uh, industry in our community. Is this something that maybe potentially the city would be open to joining in on or being involved with? Well, I think we, we would pr- uh, provide information uh, from our programming and, and our facilities to the app from that perspective. Uh, we have our website uh, as well, thompson.ca, that people can can go on and see what the facility schedules are, the programming that's on there. So I'm sure that uh, we could work in conjunction with the app to ensure that uh, everybody gets as much information as possible. Okay. Now, uh, with a new month and a new year, in a sense, starting as it's September and council is coming back from summer break, has the city established some priorities they plan to focus on for the next few months? Uh, We actually are going into some planning sessions. The upcoming budget deliberations for the 2016 year will begin uh, next month. Uh, We have the uh, organizational uh, bylaw to review and uh, the reorganization annual uh, assignment of committees uh, and the deputy mayor will happen in November. So we're just putting that uh, work in the process now and we'll be looking also at the uh, the fi- uh, four-year uh, capital plan uh, from 2016 to 2020 as well. 
Okay. And as I mentioned, new year in a sense, as kids go back to school. Uh, out of curiosity, do you have any tips or words of wisdom from the mayor, so to say, for the students uh, starting a brand new year? Well, I don't know if it's words of wisdom, but uh, basically it's a hot topic around uh, Thompson. Also in, in Winnipeg, I, I did a, a show with uh, uh, an interview with CBC this morning in regards to school speed zones. So I just want to remind people that uh, uh, the speed zones are in effect at the elementary schools, all elementary schools uh, in Thompson. Uh, uh, they come into effect the first day of September and they're in place until the last day of June, Monday through Friday from 8 uh, a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, the speed limit is 30 kilometers in the designated zones. Uh, so uh, this week, and we've had lots of conversations as the rest of the province has, uh, why why are they enforced uh, before school gets in? Well, the, the difficulty is that the the start of the school year is a moving number every, a moving day every year changes. So you can't say a specific date for the start of school or the, or the uh, end of school. So that's why it says September and June, uh, because the, the opening day of school fluctuates uh, every year. And so uh, from that perspective, the actual first day of school is next Wednesday. In the meantime, uh, our enforcement uh, groups, RCMP and, and bylaw officer, uh, will be providing information and doing some uh, enforcement. Uh, the reality is if you're driving excessive uh, over the speed limit, uh, you will receive a ticket. Uh, if you are uh, marginally above, uh, you'll probably get an informational ticket uh, advising, or sorry, not ticket, but a, an inf informational warning advising you of the speed zone. Uh, so just be aware of the speed zones. There's there's six currently uh, in around tops around each elementary school. Uh, there will be another one once the uh, the French school opens in January that will be added on, on Weir Road. So just be aware of that. Do we know how, because the in, the enforcement of this bylaw happened this week, so do we know how it went? Were drivers generally obeying the new speed limits? I, I haven't heard anything one way or the other that there was uh, an abundance of tickets issued or abundance of uh, warnings. I have had zero calls in regards to uh, to that, so I'm assuming that things are going well and that people are are uh, obeying the, the speed zones. I, I, I don't doubt there have been some tickets uh, written, but again, those usually are excessive speed. Yeah, for sure. And uh, because you mentioned it, the French school, that's uh, on track to be open for January. How are students going to be uh, attending school there during the school year if they're uh, going to be transitioning to that building? Well, I believe they, they're currently housed uh, in Burntwood School. Uh, and I believe, uh, and we'd have to discuss that with the school district and Mr. Lake, but uh, from my information, I believe the transition will take a, take. Uh, effect over the Christmas break and uh, in the in the new year they'll be beginning in their new school. But uh, there is uh, places in place uh, currently to go from September to uh, to Christmas. Okay, and also City Council is coming out of so-called summer break, and their next meeting is next week, correct? Correct. It's Tuesday, and that reminds me of the long weekend. Uh, city facilities, all city facilities are closed on uh, Monday, the holiday. Uh, we do have, and and therefore the uh, the regular council meeting of Monday was is moved to Tuesday evening to 7 p.m. so the, well, the uh, general public is welcome to attend uh, and uh, come out and there's a question period at the beginning question period at the end and if you want to stay for the whole thing we are more than welcome uh, so we encourage everyone to, to come out to the uh, the council meeting on on uh, the 8th at uh, 7 p.m. Great. Now, before we end, anything else you wanted to mention? Uh, I think we've covered most everything. There's a couple of special events. Uh, we do have the uh, uh, Walk a Mile in Our Shoes, the YWCA fundraising event. That's happening on uh, September 12th, um, so Saturday, September 12th at noon at YWCA. So we we'll encourage people to uh, come out, and uh, and it's a worthwhile uh, event. I've, I've uh, participated in a number of times, and uh, um, we hope the weather will cooperate with us, and it's an excellent fundraiser for, for the YWCA, so look forward to that. Great. Well, that's this edition of City Beat. Join us next Thursday around 11.30 for more on what's happening around the city and City Hall. For 1029 CHTM, I'm Monica Gould. City Beat will be back next Thursday.